Hello fellow duelists, this is Shadow of the Moon, and today I'm going to be continuing my Yu-Gi-Oh! progression series. So the last video was on the Cybernetic Revolution. This is going to be on the new set that comes that came out right after that called Elemental Energy. So Elemental Energy came out in November of 2005 and was the last set of 2005, kind of ending you know, the year of the GOAT format that was earlier in the year and around April or so. Uh, I'm, I still am waiting on the two structure deck cards to come out, so usually the object of this video is to show you the structure deck cards and then uh, continue on with the actual set, but I will be showcasing those as soon as I get them. And there are two structure decks to note. First one came out in October of 28, 2005, and it was the Warrior's Triumph structure deck. It came with many reprints, obviously with Exal Force, ZD Warrior Lady, and the like. And also um, had Guilford the Legend, which was a great equip monster and actually is still one of the coolest looking boss monsters of today. Also, the new card to come out would be in February of twenty or February of 2006, and that is the Spellcaster's Command Structure Deck. So that came with reprints of Magic Cylinder, Breaker the Magical Warrior, and also reprint of Chaos Command Magician, which is a really cool level 6 uh, light 24 monster that does has to do with spell counters and I will be showcasing that too I will also be showcasing the uh, cards for the new 2006 structure deck that came out in March of that year right before the last set so I will be talking about the last set after this video in the next one but I wanted to showcase an elemental energy because believe it or not Elemental Energy did not have too many new things come in it. Um, I'm going to showcase the ones that it did have. So let me go into my trusty binder. So here. And this one, as you can see, the main ones that came out during this time were the Dark World, which was a new archetype that let you discard cards for especially these two, to special summon them from the graveyard. So if you played cards like Card Destruction, or if you played any card that discarded a card, these would be special summoned, which were amazing. And, had, you know, it was a very good archetype that is still being supported to this day. They just came out with a structure deck literally uh, late last year, which I'm very happy that they did. The Water Dragon archetype is kind of different because the Water Dragon archetype... Um, focused on like hydro get on and oxy get on and stuff and bonding h2o so it was kind of a you know kind of a cool little gimmick it really didn't see play and then you saw the elemental cards such as elemental hero tempest which i don't have and then elemental hero shining flare wingman which is actually from the uh elemental energy set it's the uh cover card and then you had the VW XYZ Dragon Catapult Cannon, which was ridiculous and hilariously hard to bring out because it was literally two fusion monsters that were already really hard to bring out as it is. So a lot of people didn't really play it often, but it was, a, you know, it was still fun to actually see something like that. But the main card everybody remembers is the Pot of Avarice. Pot of Avarice let you shuffle five monster cards back into your deck uh, and then draw two cards so it was a great great way to get hand resources with pot of greed and graceful charity being banned it was a good way to be able to get some draw power and this was the only new card that saw play um i'm glad that it did because it is a actually was a pretty good card which is what i did in my deck i did include it uh keep in mind though it doesn't there's not really a whole lot that has changed in the deck i will be telling you but all in all, we're still in the Reaper format or the Golden Age format after, or the the format, the fun format after the Golden Age format. So now I'm going to be showing you the Red Eyes Black Dragon deck. So obviously your three copies of Red Eyes B Dragon. This is your main card in the deck. Nothing has changed there. You two copies of your Red Eyes Black Chick because Red Eyes Black Chick was a great way to special summon it from your hand. Three Mystic Tomatoes. Uh, I did cut out the Mass Dragon, obviously, just like I did within the Cybernetic Revolution. We are only using Mystic Tomato because this is literally the best way to search for it and also search for a lot of the other dark monsters. Then you had one Breaker of the Magical Warrior, one Sangen, and then instead of a Nidori and a Spirit Reaper, we're in the Spirit Reaper format. So 
I actually chose to use two Spirit Reapers in this deck because this was a great card to have if you used it and bounced it from Mystic Tomato and searched for it. It made it very difficult to get off the field, and one was already bad enough, but having two just made it even more just chaotic. And then you had one Chaos Sorcerer, speaking of chaos. And then for the light side, we had three Cyber Dragons, still mandatory in the deck. Three Cyber Dragons was still great. One Blade Knight, because you can make this attack 2,000 if you had one or less cards in your hand. One DD Warrior Lady to kind of ram into your opponent and banish it. One Magical Merchant, which let you excavate cards from your deck to the graveyard until you hit a spell card, but all the monsters will go to the graveyard. And then one Magician of Faith will be able to bring back a spell card of your choosing. All right, so that's going to be it for the main deck. Now we're going to be going on to the um, spells and traps. So we have two copies of Red Eyes of Inferno Fire Blast. Obviously, this is just in here because if you have a Red Eyes Black Dragon, you can do 2,400 damage to your opponent. Great burn card, but you just you can't attack with the Red Eyes that turn, which is completely fine. I mean, I don't ex we expect to right after that. Then one Heavy Storm and one Dark Hole for your destruction. So it destroys all spells and traps, destroys all monsters on the field. One Premature Burial to kind of get rid of your opponent's stuff. Or for you to bring back a monster with, and by paying 800 points, uh, doing pay, eight, paying 800 uh, life points, you can special summon a monster back from the graveyard. One Book of Moon and one Enemy Controller. If you're wondering, I'm not using Snatch still. I'm just using to use Enemy Controller by personal preference because it's literally, you know, it's like a brain control. Uh, if you want to use brain control, you can do that too. But I'm just choosing to play Enemy Controller because I actually really like to. And then two Noblemen of Crossout. This is in here, Destroy Magician of Faith, Magical Merchant, all those cards that have flip effects. And then finally, the new Pot of Avarice. So you are playing Pot of Avarice. This is a great card in here. Some decks would play two. Some decks would only play the one. This deck, I'm only playing one in because I just to add a little bit of flavor to it. Is It, it is a still, still a very good card. And then for the traps, Heavy Traps, we're running three Sakretsu Armors. Uh, this was pretty much standard at the time, uh, running three of these because Mirror Force was gone. And then you had three copies. I'm actually, instead of M Mystical Space Tyrant Foon, I'm running three copies of Dust Tornado. Not only is this a great bait card, but this also lets you s set a spell and trap card during the turn that you activate it. So it actually comes in handy for your following turn if you need to activate a trap or activate something. And I'm running three because a lot of people never expected Dust Tornadoes, and it was a staple back then. And then we're going to be playing one call of the Haunted to special summon a monster back from your graveyard. And then finally, Torrential, Magic Cylinder, and uh, Bottomless Trap Hole. So if you wanted to, you could replace Bottomless with another Magic Cylinder. Because Magic Cylinder, at the time uh, when the Structure Deck came out, the, the Spellcasters uh, Command Structure Deck or whatever came out, it was literally, it was either that or the Sakretsu armor. So if you didn't have Sakretsu, this was the cheapest alternative that you could get. But if you wanted to, you could replace this with that. I actually like having this for flavor and just like for diversity. But yeah, guys, that's going to be it for the deck profile. Um, this is still a very fun format right after the Golden Age. So there's still a lot of things being worked out. Monarchs are actually on the rise. You have a lot of really good cards that have you know that are coming out and that deck people's decks are changing it is still more it is still chaos based but at the same time you have a lot of variety in the deck but what's really going to be exciting is going to be the f next set after this which will be released in march of 2006 and that will be shadow of infinity but that will be a video for another day so thank you so much for watching my historical progression series i love doing these and with that I'll see you guys next time. Later.